G'day trendsetters, this is the Sea Sucker Talon, a single bicycle rack that's designed to mount to a vehicle without using any hardware of any kind. Rather, it utilizes a very unique suction cup type system. This rack isn't terribly useful for a vehicle such as a Honda Element. Uh, usually I prefer to stick my bikes inside this particular rig, but it is useful for vehicles such as this Porsche 911. Admittedly, this Porsche 911 isn't exactly the most useful car for toting around a bicycle such as this one, but this rack, because of its size, is super handy. For example, you could take it on vacation and use it on a rental car, especially, say for example, if the inside of the car is filled with luggage, which quite often happens, and you're forced to carry your bicycle on the roof, especially if you have the bicycle box to deal with, which takes up quite a bit of room. Momentarily, I'll unbox this package so we can see what's inside, and then I'll mount it to the exterior of this Porsche 911, and if everything goes to plan, I'll then mount the bicycle onto the rack. This will be one of at least three cars I'll be testing with this rack, so without further ado, let's get on to the unboxing. The first thing we see is these instructions that say, read this before using your Seasucker bike rack. So, We'll be paying attention to that. Then we have a bag that contains, looks like the main components of the Seasucker Talon rack. Inside, we have two component pieces. And the main component Talon rack. It's right there. Now, because I'm going to be using this uh, rack with various bikes, I requested all uh, axle types for the fork mount. So I've got a 15 millimeter through axle fork mount. I also have a 12 millimeter through axle fork mount and the traditional quick release fork mount as well. And the final piece of this puzzle is the hog wheel holder, which is apparently a revolutionary way to hold your front wheel using a fork mount bike rack. To install the Sea Sucker rack, first of all, I have to remove the plastic protectors off the actual suction cup mechanisms. Then it's simply a matter and make sure the surface is reasonably clean on your car and also on the sea sucker itself. I simply place it onto the vehicle roof just like that. Push it down. Now hopefully you can see this. There's a uh, little button I'll push and that will start clamping the suction to the roof. And it's already got the bite. Look at that, it's locked down. I'll repeat the same for the other side. It's locked down. And the final, which I will change the camera angle for so you can see what I'm doing, is to lock down the back part of the rack. Quite simple, you push the button quite a few times, and there you go, you can see the button is now completely recessed. So the rack is firmly in place. I can't even budge that thing. It's not going anywhere. <clears throat> okay, now we have to mount um, the second piece of the rack onto the rear window. For the rear wheel mount, I remove the protective cup and I strategically place it. This is the uh, tricky part. Hopefully you can quickly figure out where it needs to go. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got a reference point. 
of the defroster on the rear window. Okay, the sea sucker is on. There is no way that's moving anywhere. Time to mount the bike. You should probably install a clean bike onto your roof. Of course, that's not ideal because we get our bikes dirty when we use them. So, thankfully, this road bike, the 3T Strata, has some nice little recessed slots for the fork to sit into. Okay, it's not bolted down yet. I need my Allen key. Okay, that is the front of the bike locked down. And the rear wheel, simply a matter of using these straps, Velcro straps just to lock down the wheel. That's it, bike's done. Now, as you can see, I'm shaking around. You might think it's wobbly. That's just the roof flexing of the car, so don't worry too much. And in case you're wondering, I've got the front wheel, which I would throw behind the front seat in a suitable wheel bag, just like that. And here is how you release the rack. It's quite simple. There's two little um, like knobs either side of each suction cup, one there, one there simply pull up it's released now over a period of a couple of days the uh, rack will lose its suction and what that means is you'll start seeing this button here starting to protrude further and further out so if you use it all the time and it lives on your car permanently you'll need to pressurize it every few days which as you can see is quite simple so there we go it's done in this little segment I'm going to fit the sea sucker to the roof of this Toyota Prius right here. And the bike I'm going to use on the rack um, utilizes a traditional quick release mechanism. So I had to swap out the, uh, the mounting piece here. Let's mount it onto the roof of this Prius and uh, hopefully it works out okay. Place the sea sucker onto the roof. Push it down a little bit. Get the suction initiated. It's clamped, perfect. Clamped on, and the rear piece. The roof of the Prius has got some interesting contours, so here we go, it's suctioning on perfectly. It's not going anywhere. Then the rear wheel mounting piece, it's roughly straight. Okay, she's on. Now it's time to mount this grubby little cyclocross bike onto the roof of this Toyota Prius. I position the rear wheel so it sits in the holder nicely and the front into the quick release slot. And this is just like any other bicycle quick release. So it's the tension appropriately, appropriately I'm trying to say. Lock it down, probably a bit too tight there. That's perfect. That's done. Ready for transport. To swap fork adapters, simply use a wrench. I have an adjustable wrench in this case, which is not adjusted right. Now it is. So I put the wrench on the nut. Use a trusty Allen key. Okay, I'll repeat the process on the other side. So I've got the bare towel on here without any adapter mounted. This is the adapter for the 12 millimeter through axle. Take the screw through the hole. You can see, I'm getting uh, the camera shot right there. And I put on washer. It'd be nice if I had a helper. It's actually not hard, it's just difficult trying to film and get the shot. So the nut and bolt is 
installed on one side, I just need to tighten it all down. And on the back side, I've got the nut. I'll need to use a wrench to hold the nut in place. And you just tighten down. That's good. Now I'll just repeat the process on the other side. Done. 12 millimeter through axle adapter installed. So as you can see, I've got my Honda Element with one of my personal gravel bikes hanging off the back, courtesy of the Sea Sucker Talon rack. Now, whilst this is not the most practical use of the rack, you can certainly see that it works, and it would certainly work very well for, say, a minivan or some other similar vehicle. The hog wheel holding system consists of three pieces, the first being an end cap and this end cap is used to replace the existing end cap on your quick release skewer, like this one here. And this is only for nine millimeter quick releases or regular skewers if you prefer. The second piece, the main body of the hog wheel holding system is this big chunk of uh, gold aluminium, which actually threads onto this end cap. And the third and final piece is this retention strap to ideally keep the wheel in place once it is attached to the rear of the bike. Now it's time to demonstrate. The first piece of the installation is to remove the existing end cap, which I've loosened off considerably, so I have a little bit of time. So that comes off. You want to keep your quick release spring in place. And here's the hog wheel holder end cap. So all you have to do is just tighten down as you would with a regular quickly skewer to appropriate tension. The next step, I take the main body of the hog wheel holder and I thread it onto the end cap anti-clockwise. So it's the opposite of what you would ordinarily expect. It's tightened down so it's at least decently tight. And uh, next I will mount the wheel. Next I install the front wheel. Here it is right here. And this particular front wheel utilizes a bolt-on type uh, crook release, which is an older style. So I'll have to use my Allen key to tighten this one down actually. And there you go. That's it, it's done. So the front wheel is held in place and and to stop the wheel rotating during transport, I would use the supplied Velcro strap. It's orange, it's easy to find. Lash the wheel to the frame, and that will solve the wheel spinning around whilst you're driving along problem. As you can see, my road bicycle is safely attached to the rear of my Honda Element, although you will want to take some care if you drive this uh, particular setup over a speed bump with the bicycle hanging off the back like that. Ordinarily I'd have this bicycle inside the element, but you get what I'm trying to accomplish for the purposes of this demonstration. The Sea Sucker Talon rack is the perfect rack for cars, not typically suited for a bike rack, or it's a temporary bike rack that can attach to virtually any car in under a minute, but save the unsightly appearance of a hitch or rack hanging permanently off your car. If you want to keep your car rack free when you're not toting a bicycle around, the Talon is very worthy of your consideration. 
weighing just over two kilograms or about 4.5 pounds ready for use. This is one of the lightest racks on the market and with that comes a lot of versatility. Requiring just 15 inches or 381 millimeters of unobstructed vehicle surface area to work, I cannot think of any rack that compares for weight and ease of use. It will tote around a single bike weighing up to 20 kilograms or 44 pounds in weight and lends itself well to travel scenarios. When your rental car is packed to the gills with your stuff and a bike case, simply install the sea sucker onto the roof and off you go. And you can install it virtually anywhere on the vehicle. Priced at $300 with one axle adapter direct from Sea Sucker, the Talon is a great deal. Sea Sucker also sells a bunch of accessories for the rack, so be sure to check out their website at the link in the video description below. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this review to be helpful and insightful. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next video.